Welcome back. All right, news of the day video for all you fine people for your Tuesday, January the 24th. We're a week away from the end of January, and then we get into February. February is a fun month. Uh, so, Ottawa news today, not fun news coming out of Ottawa. Uh, first off, yesterday it was revealed that Josh Norris has had to have shoulder surgery. It, it looks like it's the same injury he'd been fighting to come back from. The question that I would ask is, so are we looking at another player that either came back too early, was something missed, uh, is this just something that was unavoidable and it was going to happen, but at any rate, his season is done. So that's bad news for the Sens, who had felt like finally had their lines set up the way they wanted them to be, so big line changes going into their next game, and we'll see how things go for them. Uh, of course, the other Ottawa news, and the one news item that's dominating today, is that their assistant coach, Bob Jones, has been diagnosed with ALS. Apparently, the team is known for a week or two. Uh, the players have known as well. They're just bringing out publicly now that he is, he is battling this illness. It is an illness that does not have a known cause. Uh, what, what causes this to take place is still a medical mystery, and there is no known cure for it. So, um, you know, all the best to him. Uh, Calgary Flames, of course, Chris Snow has been going through this for years. Um, and they've, they've documented the whole way through what he's gone through. So, uh, all the best to him and my thoughts to him, his family, and of course, to the Senators organization. Now, uh, in other news from today, the St. Louis Blues are getting a bit healthier. Uh, both Tarasenko and Krug activated off injured reserve. That's good news for St. Louis. Uh, Pavel Butchnevich, on the other hand, has had a minor surgery for an infection in his ankle. And so it's not seen as being serious. He will be reevaluated after the All-Star break. So uh, he could be back once the All-Star break is done. We will see some teams getting healthier coming out of the All-Star break. I think we'll also see some players uh, who are kind of banged up right now feeling a lot better after getting that 10 days off. Most teams have about a 10-day window where they're off. Some have more, I think. <clears throat> but at any rate, St. Louis getting a bit healthier. And with Tarasenko, now that he's healthy, we'll probably hear those rumors picking up again as to where he's going to go and for what at the deadline. Uh, Matt Dumba is going to play tonight for Minnesota. He's been a healthy scratch the last two. Working in his favor, the last two games have not been good games for Minnesota. Uh, the Wild are suddenly in trouble. So they had this really nice run for about a month, month and a half there. And now things have kind of started going the other direction. So while Dumba's probably on the trade block as well, you kind of have to play him if you want his trade value to go up. So uh, we'll see how things go for Minnesota tonight. We'll see how Dumba responds to being scratched for two straight games and what that does to his trade value, right? So yeah, uh, all the best to Minnesota. Uh, Vancouver, on the other hand, uh, there's been interviews with Bruce Boudreaux, and um, I've still got the Canucks logo next to it because it's still related to what's been going on with the team. Uh, but Bruce knew that, that the schedule was lined up this way. He knew the date where he would likely get fired, and it turned out to be correct. And he looked at the schedule and saw that this was a really tough stretch of 12 games. And then the schedule got a lot easier. And so the idea is a simple one. I've seen this from media as well. Uh, you bring in the new coach when the schedule is going to get a lot easier. Tonight they're against Chicago as a for instance. They've got three games against Chicago from here for the rest of the year. Uh, they've got games against some weaker teams in the Pacific, of course, too, from the here till the rest of the season. So you bring in the new coach when the schedule's a lot lighter. The schedule turns around. You start winning some games. And then you're kind of selling the fans on this hope. Like, see, we changed the coach and things got better. Uh, but yeah, Bruce knew that this was going to happen. He admitted that it was a distraction for both coaches and for players alike. And he stated that uh, there were meetings they were having where they were discussing their, their job security more than the upcoming game. And they had a 1-12-1 and record during this period, which likely was negatively impacted too by all of the speculation. I mean, the Canucks wouldn't have won very many of those games without that distraction, but it can't have helped. Uh, so when he was asked about his relationship with Rutherford and Alvina, and Jim Rutherford was very clear that him and Bruce are good friends, uh, Bruce declined to comment uh, on that situation at this point. Uh, and, you know, it's weird because anytime that a coach gets fired, we very often will hear, well, no, there's no hard feelings and think, but you, there have to be hard feelings at some point. And I, I don't think Bruce is happy about the way this went down either. So as I mentioned in the video on the firing as well, uh, I do wonder how this is going to affect the Canucks' ability to A, keep their own players, who, according to the province, were really angry about this way, the way this was handled. 
Um, when you see the way that your boss is being treated, you look and go, hey, if that's the way they're treating him, how are they going to treat us? Um, and then there's the also the idea that how are you going to attract new players to the team when things from the outside look as absolutely chaotic as they are. So for Vancouver, it's a situation that we've seen Ottawa go through this over the last five years. Uh, Buffalo's gone through this at certain points as well. And we'll see how Vancouver comes through this. Notice that Buffalo and Ottawa are both teams that have struggled to come out of that. So it's it's one of those things where it, it can take a long, long time. And this could be a really long process of, of having that turnaround. And there's no guarantee it's going to work. So we'll see how things go for Vancouver from here. Uh, so Brett Howden is off LTIR for the Vegas Golden Knights. He will be playing tonight. Uh, that's good news. If Vegas starts getting healthier, that will improve their 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 situation they've been very hit and miss lately mostly miss uh the hit was the game against the capitals the other night that was the best game they've played in weeks but then they followed it up with kind of a stinker against the coyotes so i i i really don't know how things are going to go for vegas but if they start getting healthier that will help them out a lot right uh their their hold upon the the first place uh spot in the pacific division is tenuous at best so Getting guys back and getting things going, very important that they get that done. Speaking of which, the Colorado Avalanche, who've been playing very well lately, uh, Makar is not playing tonight either. This is reminding me of the Elias Patterson situation last year. He's day-to-day. -day. He's day-to-day. -day. Nope, it's nothing major. Nothing major. Nope, he's day-to-day. -day. It's fine. It's fine. And then all of a sudden, you know, on the other hand, it's not fine and he's going to be out for a while. I really hope that's not the case with Makar. Uh, he was seen as a game time decision, and now it's been confirmed he won't play tonight. Uh, so again, it doesn't sound like it's that major, but we're up to, what, a week now? If you're out for a week and you miss that many games, it, it may not be a really minor injury. So again, we don't know what's going on with McCarr, but he's not playing. Uh, Jared Bednar also saying it is highly unlikely that we'll see Manson back before the All-Star break. So they're they're dealing with with injuries to those two, plus you've got Byram. That's uh, three of your top six or three of your top four, depending on where Manson or Byram are playing any given game. And so, yeah, it's it's tough to get through that. The fact Colorado's been able to, to go on the run that they're on currently is remarkable, and we'll see if that continues uh, with the game that they're playing tonight. Uh, Gabe Velarde, who went home to be reevaluated by the LA Kings, so I didn't do a news video on that. I've been doing them as much lately as I, I, I usually did. Um, I'm trying to change the formula up a little bit. Uh, so Velarde is not expected to join the LA Kings for the rest of their, their road trip. So for the next four games, he'll be out. Uh, they're not saying a whole lot about what's going on. Just he's going to be reevaluated and he's, he's done before the all-star break. So Velarde who's had quite the season. He's been, you know, one of those breakthrough stars in the NHL this year. Uh, him being out for that long, that's troublesome, but not much you can do about it for the LA Kings. They've got to fight through that and uh, rely on some other guys. Byfields look good lately. Give him some more ice time and give him that opportunity. Uh, not playing tonight for Florida is Sam Bennett. So Bennett got hurt last night. They're, they're not disclosing exactly the nature of the injury. Uh, if you saw the play, you can guess. But he came back into the game and then he left again. He will not play tonight. So uh, whatever it is that's bothering him at this point, we can consider it day to day. But you have to put an asterisk there because it hasn't been officially confirmed as a day-to-day -day injury uh, instead of week-to-week, -week, but you have to kind of assume that. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through you just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. To all of the new subscribers that we've got on the channel, welcome. It's great to see um, the channel's growth over the last few days. And it, it goes to show what I've thought the whole season, which is that nothing was happening which i mean really honestly every day just felt like it was the same as the last and it's gonna be the same as the next and uh for right or for wrong for good or for bad uh the the firing in vancouver seems to have rejuvenated people's interest in things and uh so a lot of new a lot of new subscribers on the channel and uh welcome and uh congratulations on on signing up uh and for all new members and new patrons as well welcome and uh yeah so there you go uh, let me know your thoughts, though, as I said, in the comment section below. If you haven't hit like and subscribe, I encourage you to do both. Thanks again for all your support. I will talk to you guys again soon.